Armored Corps Law, The Red Guns. An elite group of Armored Corps pilots or a group of good-for-nothings being shaped into soldiers by veterans. This is The Red Guns. History. Before the Red Guns, their predecessors was Balaam's own paramilitary police force under the command of Commander Nile, later to become Gun 2 Nile. It's during this force's time that Nile would achieve a record number of arrests, including a man named Wu Ha Hai, who would later become Gun 3 within the Red Guns. However, there would be one man who would prove to be just as skilled as this Balaam commander, and his name would be Commander Michigan, commander of the Furlong Arms Fleet a rivalry that would end with Nile and Michigan ending up sharing a friendly drink. It's believed what caused the formation of the Red Guns is when Furlong and Balaam battled in the Jupiter War. Although we have little information about who the victor of this war was and what exactly happened, it's suggested that after this war, Michigan, having been known by many as the hero of the Jupiter War, would either be recruited by Balaam to lead their new elite AC squad called the Red Guns, or that the commander went over to Balaam himself, in an attempt to help his former Furlong allies, as suggested by his bio, where it is noted he put a bounty on himself with the stipulation that half of the reward money be distributed among his former comrades at Furlong. A hero with a bounty may make this former commander a sort of Robin Hood figure using his own money to help his former comrades, but the truth is a bounty is usually placed on a wanted criminal by an enforcement agency for their capture within our own world and one cannot legally put a bounty on themselves, as this would be a criminal act in itself, and nor can a military service put a bounty on a soldier or civilian, as this would be considered a violation of international laws. However, since the laws of Rubicon 3 and Armored Core 6 are not gone into great detail, working on basic knowledge of bounty systems of our own world, we can presume either Balan themselves issued this bounty for Michigan, with his own money being used, which means the corporation accepts that their own commander has committed crimes against the government the PCA work for, or that this bounty board is more like an assassination board for mark targets within Malem. That aside, it's here where the Red Guns begin to form, with G1 Michigan becoming the commander of this new group, G2 Nal becoming his second in command, and the ranks would only grow, with G3 Wu Ha Hai being added either as punishment for his crimes against the Balaam economic spear or the choice of this or death. Again, the legal system within Armored Core 6 is not looked into much, as such a bit of wiggle room needed to be applied here. Next we have G4 Volta and G5 Igasu, a pair noted to be partners in crime. We know thanks to G5's profile that he was a backstreet gambler who bet too big and lost parts of himself, literally. As to pay back his debtors, he was forced to undergo experimental fourth generation augment surgery to pay back his debtors. Was this done through a corporation or in the back streets is up for debate. As we know from armored cores of the past, the Murakuma Corporation would target ravens in debt and promise to wipe their debt for them if they underwent human plus surgery. If this is the case, the corporations this year are very much doing the same, if Balaam is using augmented pilots at all. As while the Vespers are labelled as the augmented human squad, Balaam's red guns are simply known as elite AC pilots. It's here the path of G4 and G5 is a little lost, as noted in G5's bio that in his new life he began to quarrel with Volta and with his recalcitrant nature, was such that one day he picked a fight with the hero of Jupiter, G1 who fought back with such fury that Igasu never quite looked the same after. This is then followed up in Volta's profile, which suggests after not only beating G5 but also G4, that Michigan made it his goal to make something of the pair, and thus began their daily hell. It's with this that two stories come to mind, either G4 and G5 found themselves within the ranks of Balaam where they met G1, or these pair would go into a life of crime in a Balaam run planet, only to one day meet this hero Jupiter, who would then drag them into the Red Guns to try and reform them somehow. The list so far would suggest that the Red Guns is mostly made up of criminals of all areas, war, major and even petty, with the only above board members being G2, and the last member with known history, G Red, who as a young boy was starstruck by the reports of Michigan's brutal triumphs in the Jupiter War, making him go on to try to be like his idol, and through blood, sweat and tears, he would get this chance to work for his hero, when the Balaam administration exam came, he won his place in the Red Guns at the very moment he stood to attention to greet the squad. This is finally when we come to the other members, with little to no history to them, starting with G7. The only history on this pilot is that he was ranked D at number 22 in the Allmind Arena, 
and his death happened at the contaminated city, with only 12 hours left on his license. And then we come to the rest, G8 to G12 remain unknown and are never mentioned, in fact we only have G13, which is the call sign given to 621 after the mercenary kills the defunct trainee. But this is just how the Red Guns came to be before the story of Armour Corps 6 or the events of the Coral War. From the start, 621 will see the wreck of Gun 7's Armoured Corps while searching for a license to use on Rubicon 3 in the contaminated city. After this, the Mercenary will meet Gun 1 Michigan when the Hound is paired up with Gun 5 and Gun 4 on the mission Attack the Down Complex where 621 will see the relationship between the Red Gun Commander and his fellow officers are not professional. In fact, it's very much a rough and almost military attitude towards each other, as Michigan yells and insults G4 and G5 skills, with G5 being the more mouthy of the pair back to their commander. It's here 621 can choose to either aid the pair in their mission, or attack the Red Guns, showing the real rough relationship between the guns here, as Igasu is more than eager to tell 621 how he is not taking any more shit from them. He gets enough of that from Michigan. The next time a red gun shows up is in the mission Operation Wall Climber, where we will see the death of Volta, who went out without Igasu, who went AWOL before the red gun's forces attacked the wall. It's within the wreck of Volta's AC we can read his last words, showing that unlike G5, Volta had come to accept his new lay of life, and even began to like it. Igasu, I'm telling you man, you gotta give Michigan a chance. He's different from the suits at HQ. Look, I know he's an asshole, but he's looking out for us, you know? Almost like we got a family here. Man, if there's anyone who deserves a punching out, it's those freaks who sent us on this suicide mission. You picked a good day to go AWOL. Wish I... The deaths of Red Gun members, however, would not end here. In the mission Prisoner Rescue, 621 or a Rubicon Liberation Front AC pilot would face G2 Nile, who comes to try and stop the prisoner escape, only to be killed there. It's from his voice alone, you can tell Nile is more refined than the other guns, a professional man with his head screwed on. As such, it's no wonder then he was noted for being the brains of the Red Guns. It's believed Nile's loss here hit the Red Guns hard, and perhaps affecting Michigan, as the next time the Red Guns are seen, it is in the mission Destroy the Ice Worm, where G5 and Michigan are once again showing that rough relationship they have, and we even see Michigan offer V4 Rusty to join the Red Guns, as he acts like a well-trained soldier, always thinking ahead, something that G2 now seem to do. Yet the fate of the Red Guns here is not a happy one, for after the discovery of Watchpoint Alpha, Balin rushes in with MTs and their last remaining Red Guns, only to lose half of their forces to the defences and face a number of desertions, including G5 and G3. While in this timeline 621 will battle G5 here and kill him, in others, G5 will send an assassin named Cool Cool after 621. The final two members to be killed are Michigan himself by 621 or Rusty, with a final Balaam assault on the watchpoint, and G3, who will switch sides to Arquebus in the mission Reach the Coral Convergence. Which he did because in his own words, Balaam is a sinking ship and Arquebus star is on the rise. Now after all this, this is where history takes a series of twists and turns. As for Gun 5 and Gun 6, their stories are a little different. Starting with G6 Red, his death is only seen in the Dice cast route, where Allmind is stomping the corporation forces into the ground at the watch point. And while at first Red seems friendly to 621's aid against them, he suddenly turns on the mercenary, blaming all the Red Gun's deaths on them and their unlucky call sign. Air will also mention he is suffering from heavy combat stress and cannot be talked down resulting in 621 having to kill Red. Now for G5 Igasu, this man's history is one that is perhaps heartbreaking to see, as this one man who simply was pushing his luck, pushed and pushed to the point he is willing to give up his own body to have revenge on 621, who in his eyes has always had choices. Nobody forced them to do anything, they lived like a raven, free and able to direct their own path. We have already talked about his path into the Red Guns, and how throughout his time within the Guns, he can only see the negative, the constant barking of orders from his commander, who has also deformed him, and the freedom he seeks just out of reach because he can't escape the Red Guns. His pride as a fighter was constantly hammered down by 621, who beat the pilot not once, nor twice, not even three times, but four times in total, which can guess only resulted in more shouting and mocking from Michigan. The tough love this commander was trying to use on this man was not working, 
And what's worse is that Gun 5 would also have a ringing sound in his ears every time he and 621 met. We can guess this was his augmentations trying to pick up Air's voice. However, be it they were black market parts or simply not advanced enough, he was in pain constantly fighting, and all this just added and added to his fire of hatred and jealousy. In the end, his greatest gamble came in the Dyer's cast route, where, with the Red Guns gone, and All Mind giving him a chance to fight 621 when the Mercer went after V2 Snail, only for him to lose here, the gambler would give himself to become part of the All Mind machine, meant to kill 621 after they had done their part in the release project. You could say his desire overwhelmed All Mind's own, making the man have what he always wanted, a chance to kill the one he was jealous of, the freelancer who had it all. It's here Gun 5's tales would end, with him being able to hear air as the release project would go on. Did his fiery soul become one with the coral, or did it vanish into history? This is how all the Red Gun members met their ends. But before I end this report on the men of war and criminals, let us take a look at each armoured corps of the Red Guns. Starting with G1 Michigan's Liger Tail, it is a quad-legged type armoured corps, made up of Veral and Milanda parts, which offer a good defence against all type of damage. Being a quad-legged craft also allows this AC to float for a period of time, unlike other armour cores, giving Liger Tail an aerial advantage against foes. It's something this craft can do for a while thanks to its Shantai generator, with how much energy it offers Liger Tail. However, the bad points to all this is this AC is very heavy, meaning it won't be zooming about like a lightweight armoured core and its ammo spending is quite steep too. Speaking of which, the weapons offered on the Liger Tail are the Hugh Ben Gatling Gun, offering that burst of firepower to stagger a foe, the Tai Yang Shu Explosive Launcher, which certainly packs a punch to any AC that gets in its path, the SPL-16 Split Missile Launchers, offering a two-cell eight-way missile split to rain down upon a foe, and finally the Songbird's Grenade Cannon to blast a foe into pieces. From piloting the craft for a time, I found my use of these weapons depending on where I was. For example, being on the ground, the Shu Explosive Launcher was best used in close combat, in combination with the Hu Bin and Songbirds. However, the SPL-16 was very much left out. Yet switching into floating mode, and the SPL shines here, while the Shu Explosives, they seem to suffer a bit, perhaps because of being out of range. All in all, the Liger Tail is a craft a pilot should consider which style best suits them if they choose to use this craft. Either a floating style of using missiles, or being more ground-based with the shoe explosives. Next is G2 Nile's armoured core, Deep Down. A bipedal armoured core that mixes up the Fang Stout Tree Slender Branch philosophy and Balaam's own armoured core designs. This can be seen with a mixture of Melanda parts, making up the head and core while the arms and legs are made up of the fung parts, giving this craft the look of being rather bulky in the arms and legs. Overall, Deep Down offers a good range of defences against damage types, only less so in energy. The craft is also packed with the Sand Tide Generator, making it quite heavy. However, speed is not Deep Down's real goal, as looking from the craft's loadout, it's clear to see this AC is designed for the use of missiles. Deep Down comes equipped with the P-19 MLT-04 hand missile launcher, the P-05 twin cell homing missiles, the P-07 VTC-12 vertical missile launcher, and the Harris linear rifle, just to have something to fire when all the missiles are gone. In truth, Deep Down is very much a craft of you get what you see. Its attacks are very focused on blasting a foe away with the sheer amount of missiles it can fire on them. The style I found to be effective is to hammer away at the foe from a mid to close range combat with the hand missiles, the linear rifle and the vertical missiles to stagger them, then fire off the homing missiles for large damage. G3 is next with Li Long. This quad-legged AC is a little odd to say the least, as it's a mixed up of mixture of Balan parts from the Melanda series, arms, the Vera legs and the Tian Chang head and core. It's a real mixture of parts that while still suffer from low energy defences, make the craft stand out among the other red guns. The weapons of Li Long are the Ludlow machine gun, the P08 SPL handheld missile launcher, the P19 SPL12 two cell six split missile launcher, and the SUQ5 standard pulse shield. This AC best shines in mid range combat, as being too far away makes the Ludlow shots fall short, and the missiles tend to be easily avoided by foes. The combat style best for this craft is to hammer away at a foe with the weapons before using the shield to allow for reloading. 
After this, resume the attack, throwing in some kicks that would not go amiss here with this build. Halfway now as we take a look at G4 Volta's Craft Cannon Head, made up of Tian Chang head, core and arms with Balim tank treads to finish off this craft. Cannon Head is really what can be said is a tank build offering high defences in all areas with the lowest being energy, and if a pilot is looking to charge in with little regard for the price of repairs, or simply wanting to blow away foes sky high, then Cannon Head is for them. Its weapons are the Gu Chen Grenade Launcher, the Zimmerman Shotgun, the P-19 SPL Missile Launcher, and the Songbirds Grenade Launcher. The phrase I would like to put to Cannon Head is go big or go home, as this craft is packed with firepower, and if that fails, ram the heavy tank AC into foes. This craft offers a very heavy close combat style of fighting. There really is no dodging in Cannon Head. It's more that feeling of, I am a wall of fire and brim, and I'm going to blow away or ram through anything that gets in my way. G5 Igasu is next, with Headbringer, a bipedal Milanda C3 series armoured core, which again, like all Balan parts, offer a good rule round defences in most areas, but is let down by its energy defence. Headbringer is an all round craft really, with good energy recovery and enough speed to allow a pilot to dodge and get behind a foe. As for the weapons, the Headbringer comes with the Ludlow machine gun, the Curtis linear rifle, the PT-20 MLT missile launcher, and the Su R8 pulse shield. With such a loadout, I found myself while piloting the craft to stick to a close to mid range style of combat, using the machine gun, the rifle and missiles to damage foes, switching to the pulse shield when the Ludlow ran out to have some cover and take shots with the Lyria rifle, before adding in some kicks because I was that close it would be unwise not to. On to the final three now with G6 Red's Armoured Core Hermit. It is a bipedal Milanda Armoured Core, with like all the other Red Guns ACs, all around defences but lacking in energy defence. Hermit's weapons choice give the craft I feel a more close to mid-range combat style, with the Kokole handgun working well with the craft's two missile launchers, the P03 MLT, and the P16 SPL to stagger a craft before using the Schwan Bazooka to do the heavy damage. We then have G7 Harker's craft. To talk about the armoured core in general terms, it's a bicudal craft that is a mixture of Tian Chang parts and Milanda parts. So while it shares the defensive traits of all red gun ACs, this craft is ready to be geared up with what weapons a pilot feels would suit this bulky AC and their own piloting style. Finally, we come to the last red gun craft. G13's Tender Foot, a bipedal armoured core made up of Milanda C3 parts, sharing the Red Gun's AC traits in defences and being an all around generally good craft. Tender Foot weapons choices are very basic to say the least, in fact sharing the same loadout as the Craft 621 would come into Rubicon with. With its style of combat being the classic armoured core piloting style I feel, with the Turner Rifle and the, and the P-20MLT missiles, there for mid-range combat, while the BUTTA Pulse Blade is for getting in close to really hit a foe hard. And it is with this that the report on the Red Guns is done. While the fate of the Red Guns certainly is not one some are happy with, what it does show is that behind the corporations there is humans, each one with their own past, feelings and goals. And in truth, without these humans, the corporation is just a logo, and a long list of products. You must be Raven. One of the infamous handler Walter's hounds. Interesting. You ready to climb the wall? <laughs> <laughs> 